everyone. This is the second formative for your monochromatic value painting. And we are going to be now transitioning from making values, then using those values to create a form, a three-dimensional form on a two-dimensional surface. We are going to be creating a sphere, and we went over the sphere and the parts of the sphere in class. Um, so now we're going to apply what we have learned and see if we can do it. You are going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a round brush. Okay, so round object, round brush. You're going to need some black and white paint. And you are going to need some sort of something that you can create a circle with. So I'm using this cup. Um, you can also use a ruler or a straight edge to draw a horizon line in the background because you're going to need that as well. So I'm just using the same formative piece of paper that we used for the value scale. I'm going to use my cup to draw in my circle somewhere near the center of the paper of a square. So I've created the square. Now I'm going to plant this circle right down in it. I'm going to make it kind of dark so that you can see. I'm also going to give it a horizon line. Now my paint is still a little bit wet. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that horizon line right here where this line already was. All right, so there's that. So now I have this circle sitting on a plane. I also know that I need to make some sort of a shadow. So a shadow, a cast shadow, is an ellipse shape. So it's not a circle, it's like a pancake. So I'm just going to create that shape underneath, sketch it out until I get it right, and then make it a little bit darker so that I can see it. So here's my pancake cast shadow. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to start painting. So you can do one of two things. I always recommend doing the sphere first, but you can mark it out if you would like to. So we know that we need a highlight and we know that the highlight doesn't touch the edge of the sphere because it needs to get a little bit darker here so that it can show roundedness and form. Okay. So there's our highlight. Then we need some sort of a mid-tone, so that's going to be all in here. The next thing we need is a core shadow. So if you can remember, the sphere gets a little bit darker right around here. So I'm just sketching out this kind of like banana shape for the core shadow. It doesn't have to be perfect. But then we remember that it gets a little bit lighter down here because this is reflected light. So the light source is coming from the top left. You can mark that. In fact, I would suggest it so that you know which direction you're going. And then the light bounces onto the surface and then back up onto the sphere. So it gets a little bit lighter here. So we have highlight, mid-tone, core shadow, reflected light, and then cast shadow. And we're good to go. Okay. So I like to just plant in some white right away in the highlight and then try not to touch it. Um, let it dry just a little bit while I'm doing the rest. Okay. Now this is going to be very similar to creating your value scales, but now you're going to apply that knowledge into a form. So I know that it needs to get a little bit darker around the edge. And I'm going to work my brush back and forth to blend the best I can. Okay. And if you feel like it gets too dark too fast, you can always come back. It may be necessary for you to do more than one layer. The goal is to not see the segments of your sphere, but to have it be a nice transition in between, which is why I planted some of that white in there to begin with so that it had a good drying time. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to rework this again so that I can transition it down. Also, the first step of painting is always to kill the white, so cover the white completely. So this would be like an underpainting, an underlayer. Um, so you may have to come back and do it again. I would like you to take some time to really, really work on this. Your first layer of paint is not typically your last. So now I know that I need to start getting it to be a little bit darker. And you can see that I'm moving my brush with the shape of the object that I'm painting to create that roundedness and form. Okay. Now 
now I know that it needs to get even darker right here in that core shadow. But I also know that it needs to be blended out to create that reflected light at the bottom. And I'm gonna try to move really fast so that you're not waiting for me forever, but I would like you to really take your time when creating this sphere. This is going to help you figure out how to create form in your own, in your final summative. And you can just work that paint back and forth between the dark and the light until you get something that is similar. And I think what I'll do is I will come back and kind of speed this up and take a break because you can see that as I'm painting, the layers are starting to mix together. So I'm just going to leave that there for now, and then I'm going to come back to it. So I'm going to clean my brush off, and then I am going to find my light source and start working on the background. Now, I know that the light is coming from here, so this top corner needs to be uh, lighter, and this back corner on the right needs to be darker. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker so that I have some contrast. So I'm going to start planning in some paint here and I'm mixing my values as I go so if you move, if I move this over you can see that I have kind of a mess happening on here and that's okay I'm gonna lay down these first layers and then what I'll do is I'll keep going and speed it up for you I also know that it needs to be the darkest right here, so I just went and got some straight black. I didn't clean my brush, you'll notice, because I can like manipulate those values right off of my brush, creating a nice horizon line. I'm working those values to start to become lighter as I go over to the other side. And I'm being very gentle going around my sphere. I'm typically a pretty gestural painter, so I like the mark of the maker. I like to be able to see and feel where I've been. So I typically have a lot of like marks in my work and then I come back and refine it. I'm a little bit of a mess when it comes to painting. Okay, so you can see that this is a really good start, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry a little bit and then come back and ha get another layer. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to do the, the plane that it's sitting on, and now anything that is back further away from you to create that illusion, you are going to um, make it darker and then make it lighter as it comes forward. So let's see where I'm at. i make this a little bit darker here. Go around my sphere nicely. I'm just going to go around that cast shadow. Create the same value over here. Around my sphere slowly. And then as I come forward, I'm going to make it lighter. Just to give that illusion of space and depth. The other thing I need to do is I need to make that the cast shadow. Your cast shadow is very dark, like black dark underneath the surface. And then as it comes out further away from the sphere, it gets lighter. So I'm gonna grab some of those lighter values. I'm gonna pull them in and work my brush back and forth. Until I get something that I like. All 
All right, so this is where I'm starting, and this is actually pretty gestural, but I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back at it so you're not watching me paint the whole time, but I'll speed it up so that um, you'll be able to see my progress. Okay, so this will be your goal. You're gonna finish your sphere, and then you are gonna take a picture of it and post it to Padlet so I can see the progress you're making on your monochromatic painting unit. Thanks, have fun. If you have any questions, reach out. Bye.